If you're looking for a way to bring your early Mustang into the modern age of performance and handling, then Detroit Speed's new speed kits for the 1964.5 to 70 Ford Mustang are your answer. These kits will lower your front end 1.5 to 3 inches from factory height and are a perfect complement to the DSC rear leaf spring mini tub kit. They include a pair of big bearing spindles similar to what was used on the Boss 302 Mustang along with a pair of Detroit tuned coilover shocks. My name is Dan Adi and today we're going to show you how to install the DSC Speed Kit 2 on Kyle Tucker's 1965 Mustang. Locate the provided drill guide in the upper control arm kit. Place the drill guide up against the strut tower and line up the large holes in the drill guide with the factory upper control arm holes. Place two of the provided half inch bolts through the drill guide in the factory holes in the strut tower. Tighten the bolts to hold the drill guide in place. Use the drill guide to drill two 3 16 pilot holes in the strut tower. Remove the drill guide from the strut tower. Drill the two pilot holes to a final drill size of 33 64 Repeat these steps for the opposite side of the vehicle by flipping the drill guide over. Loosen the strut tower brace at the strut towers. Place the provided strut tower closeout plates between the strut tower brace and the strut tower. Place the provided 5 16 by 2 quarter inch hex bolts and 5 16 SAE washers down through the holes in the strut tower brace, closeout plate, and strut tower on both sides of the vehicle. From underneath the strut tower, place one of the shock mount spacers against the strut tower using the 5 16 bolts to center the spacer. Place the upper shock mount up against the spacer with the 5 16 bolts passing through the holes in the upper shock mount plate. Install the 5 16 nylock nuts and 5 16 AN washers on the threads of the bolts. Use anti-seize on the threads. Tighten the 5 16 hardware and torque to 25 foot-pounds. Repeat these steps for the opposite side of the vehicle. Place the provided upper control arm slug washers into the factory upper control arm holes from the engine side of the strut tower. The open holes in the washers will line up with the drilled holes. Position the upper control arms to the strut tower and place the provided half inch 20 by three inch hex bolts and washers to the upper control arms, strut tower, and slug washers. Install the provided half inch 20 nylock nuts onto the threads of the upper control arm bolts. Install the nominal amount of eighth inch thick body shims in between the strut tower and the upper control arm cross shafts on both bolts. Final shim amount may vary from nominal. Tighten the half inch 20 hardware and torque to 75 foot pounds. Identify the left and right hand lower control arms. The strut rod will point towards the front of the vehicle. Make sure the provided bushing spacers are placed on both sides of the rear bushing before it's installed into the rear mount. Place the lower control arm in the factory mounting locations so the strut rod will go through the front mount and the bushing will slide in between the rear mount. Reinstall the factory hardware. Insert the bolt from the rear of the vehicle to provide clearance for the factory bolt in the crossmember. Place the provided strut rod washer onto the threads of the strut rod followed by the M20 by 1.5 nylock nut and tighten. Use NICs on the threads of the bolt. Tighten and torque the half inch 20 hardware to 75 foot pounds. Use the provided crow's foot wrench to hold the strut rod while tightening the M20 by 1.5 nylock nut. Torque the M20 nylock nut to 150 foot pounds. Remove the castle nuts and lower control arm spacer from the upper and lower ball joints. Place the spindle on the lower ball joint. Install the provided spacer onto the ball joint stud followed by the lower ball joint castle nut. Lower the upper control arm to install the spindle to the upper control arm ball joint. Install the provided upper ball joint castle nut onto the upper ball joint stud. Tighten and torque the lower ball joint nut to 90 foot pounds and the upper ball joint nut to 60 foot pounds. Install the cotter pin in the upper and lower ball joint stud and castle nut. Repeat these steps for the opposite side of the vehicle. Install the provided outer tie rod end into the tie rod adjuster. Insert the outer tie rod end into the steer arm. Turn and position the ball joint stud so the cotter pin locates from front to rear to ease installation. Install and tighten the outer tie rod washer and castle nut. Torque to 45 foot-pounds. Install the cotter pin in the outer tie rod stud castle nut. Repeat these steps for the opposite side of the vehicle. Assemble the coilover shocks and springs. Locate the upper and lower shock mount bolts and spacers. Place the body side of the shock up to the upper shock mount. Install the provided half inch 20 by two and three quarter inch long hex head bolt and half inch by one inch long spacer through the upper coilover mount and shock eyelet. Make sure the bolt is facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolt and install the provided half inch 20 nylock nut and washer. Tighten the hardware, however, do not torque at this time. Raise the lower control arm up until the shaft side of the eyelet on the shock reaches the lower shock mount on the lower control arm. Slide the provided half inch 20 by two and a half inch long hex head bolts 
and half inch by 5 8 long spacer through the lower coilover mount and shock eyelet so it passes through the welded bushing on the lower shock mount. Make sure that the bolt is facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Use NICs on the threads of the bolt and install the half inch 20 Nalak nut and tighten. Place the provided aluminum jounce bumper spacers over the threads of the jounce bumpers. Install the jounce bumpers through the slotted hole in the provided shock tower closeouts. Place the provided 5 16 SAE washer over the threads of the jounce bumper followed by the 5 16 18 Nalak nut. Leave the hardware loose for now so you can adjust the position of the jounce bumper later. Place the correct side shock tower closeout to the vehicle so the holes in the closeout align with the holes on the strut tower. Use the same hardware that was removed from the OEM jounce bumper bracket to install the shock tower closeouts. Tighten the hardware. Repeat these steps for the opposite side of the vehicle. Locate one of the sway bar chassis spacers and place two of the 3 16 one inch long hex head bolts through the slots in the spacer. The hex head on the bolts will lock into the slots. Place the spacer with the bolts to the bottom side of the factory sway bar mount. Install the spacer assembly to the sway bar mount with the provided 3 8 16 by 1 inch long button head bolts, washers, and nylock nuts. Torque the 3 8 hardware to 35 foot pounds. Repeat this process for the other side of the vehicle. Install the urethane bushings on the sway bar using the provided super grease. Slide the sway bar bushing brackets over the bushings. Position the DSC sway bar to the vehicle. Place the sway bar bushing brackets over the 3 8 16 by 1 inch long hex head bolts that were installed in the spacers. Install the sway bar to the spacer bolts using the provided 3 8 16 nylock nuts. Center the sway bar in the vehicle and tighten the bolts. Do not torque at this time. Locate the sway bar end links. Place one of the provided M12 washers over the threads of the ball joint stud. Place one of the stamp washers over the thread on the end link hex adapter, followed by one of the grommets. Place this end of the end link through the sway bar mounting hole in the lower control arm. Rotate the sway bar as needed and install the sway bar end link into the sway bar mounting hole. The stud will point towards the center of the vehicle. Place another M12 washer followed by the provided M12 by 1.75 nylock nut over the threads of the end link ball joint. Place another grommet over the threads of the end link and onto the lower control arm mounting hole followed by another stamped washer. Thread the provided 3 8 16 nylock nut onto the threads and leave loose. Repeat this process for the opposite side of the vehicle. Tighten both end links with a provided M12 by 1.75 nylock nut and torque the hardware to 53 foot pounds. Tighten the 3 8 16 nylock nuts on both the end links. Do not over tighten. The end links are tight when the polyurethane bushings start to compress. Torque the 3 8 16 fasteners in the sway bar bushing brackets to 35 foot pounds. Separate the split lock collars into two pieces and place them around the sway bar to the inside of the sway bar bushings. Reassemble the collars using medium strength blue Loctite on the bolts and torque to 15 foot pounds. Position the collars tight to the urethane bushings when installing. Installation is now complete. If you have any questions on Detroit Speed's new front speed kits for the 1964 and a half to 70 Mustang, please feel free to call us at 704-662-3272 or send us an email at tech at DetroitSpeed.com. And don't forget to like and follow us on social media. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.